Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Wizards Unite has finally launched here, well, not here, worldwide. It's launched worldwide, UK and US are the first places to get Wizards Unite. Of course, Australia and New Zealand have already had the beta version for a while right now. But yes, Wizards Unite has officially launched worldwide. And of course, I'm out here right now to teach you guys exactly how to play Harry Potter Wizards Unite. Let's go. Of course, if you live in a region where Wizards Unite has not officially launched yet, that is to say, if you live in any country apart from US, UK, Australia or New Zealand, don't worry, you can actually still technically play Wizards Unite. And uh, there are two methods in which you can still install this game on your phone. Those two methods are as follows. The first method is that you can change your country location in your app store. If you change it to the US or UK or Australia or New Zealand, you will be able to install it on your phone. Of course, an alternate method, the second method is to download the APK on your Android device. Of course, the APK will only work on Android devices and not iOS devices. I have both devices with me right now, so I'm going to be playing on the Android phone because I have the APK version. Of course, disclaimer alert, any other footage that I'll be showing you guys today that is not from my APK download will be from Zoe from Zoe2. So Zoe, if you're watching, thank you so much for allowing me uh, to use your footage because I do not currently have access to all the features in Wizards Unite because a lot of the points of interest are not available in-game for me since I live in Singapore currently. But regardless, most of the information in this video will be 100% accurate or close to 100% accurate, so definitely don't click away. This video is still going to be really useful for all of you. Alright then, behind me is a Whomping Willow looking like tree the perfect location to start our Wizards Unite journey. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fish out my Android device and I'm going to start playing Wizards Unite. This will actually be the very first time I will be opening this app. So ladies and gentlemen, let's begin. Here we go. Nice. Oh nice, beautiful clock over there, of course the clock watch has finally ended because the game is finally live, for most of us at least. Nice, Harry Potter Wizards Unite, Rapello Muggleton, spell verified by Constance Pickering. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can hear that, yes, definitely you want to play with sound on because the Harry Potter hog the Harry Potter theme song is definitely going to be playing. Now let me quickly key in all my details over here and I'll get back to you guys in just a bit. All right, I have officially logged in. Let's see what's going to happen now. GPS permission required. Of course, I'm going to allow it. Cuz otherwise what's the point of playing Wizards Unite, huh? Terms of service accept. Okay. Email permissions. Yes, please. Next. This actually reminds me of that, uh, there was a teaser on this that came out a few weeks ago. Such a good trailer. Oop. You know what? I have my battery saver mode on. I'm gonna quickly switch that off. But before that, beautiful owl over here. Very, very movie-like as we zoom into the Wizards Unite logo and head on down to the real world. So ladies and gentlemen, let's go. Volunteer registration. This name is for your eyes only. So this name is going to be a different name compared to your other ID. We'll get into that in just a bit. 
Now, the code name is the one that you're gonna be uh, be careful of because this is not something you're gonna be able to change, I think, in the future. So definitely be sure to keep this code name the one that you intend on having as your game's actual code name. And definitely you want to be careful of this one. Do not play Harry Potter Wizards Night while driving. Definitely not gonna do that. Confirm. Oh, there you are. There we go. Thank goodness. Hello, I'm Constance Pickering. I work with Hermione Granger on the Statute of Secrecy Task Force. We've been charged with containing this disastrous calamity. This calamity is, well, quite calamitous. Everything that anyone has ever feared, revered, or held dear in the wizarding world, people, things, even memories, have been stolen and displaced, tossed about across the world. We've got to return what is lost, and quickly. The Statute of Secrecy is in danger of being broken. Harry Potter, an Auror from the Department of Magical Law Enforcement, is on hand to advise you on a few calamity basics. Hello. Thanks for volunteering your help to the Ministry. I'm Harry Potter. Let's get started. A quick tidbit over here. Yes, it does sound like Daniel Radcliffe, but it's not actually him. It's a voice actor. It's a really good mimicry though, so let's go right ahead. The Ministry have provided you a brilliant map designed to help find the missing objects. Magical me there indicates your position in the world. Magic always leaves traces. It indicates the location of a foundable left by magic, causing this calamity and risking the statute of secrecy. Foundables are what we're calling the things that are missing. Okay. Tap on the trace in order to return this foundable. So this is basically the most basic feature of Wizards Unite. This is something that you're going to be doing for a majority of the time. So let's go into this and then I'll talk about this in full detail as we move along. There we go. Hagrid is trapped. Oh, Barriers beautiful. Like this web have been manifested by a rather chaotic magic. We call these confoundables. If you can manage to remove that, the chaotic magic will immediately return Hagrid back to his rightful place. Alright, so basically I wanted to just inform you guys the foundable is the good thing, the confoundable is the bad thing. So Hagrid is the foundable, the spider web is the confoundable. So let me just align this and then I'll tap. Threat level is low. How likely a foundable is to expose the wizarding world, thereby breaking the statute of secrecy. The greater the threat, the harder it will be to remove the confoundable. All right. So the higher the threat level is, of course, it'll be more difficult to get rid of the confoundable and hence return the foundable. That's pretty straightforward. Traced cost defindo. Let's go. All right. That's pretty great. Nice. Hagrid is free! And can apparently apparate. <laughs> you, you overpowered the confoundable. Hagrid has been returned to Hogwarts grounds. Wonderful. What's happening? Hello? Alright, my game's crashed. I'm just gonna reload this real quickly. Confirm. Oh, there you are! Thank goodness! This calamity is... we've got... Hello? The Ministry... Magic always... Alright, so apparently after I quit the app and went back in, I have to basically do this trace again. So hopefully it does not crash on me this time. Let's do this again. Server error on encounter start. That's not good at all. I am going to refresh this one more time. Oh dear god. Server error on encounter start. Well, this is basically where I am going to have to stop using my Android device and use Zoe's footage instead. Now unfortunately, um, Today, I actually have to admit, is not the 21st of June quite yet. I am recording this a little bit in advance, and the reason for that is because I'm not sure when this game will be released for me here in Singapore. So because of that, I am going to be recording some of these videos a little bit in advance, but don't worry, like I said, 
most of the information that I will be giving you guys will definitely still be close to 100% accurate, so don't worry about any of that good stuff. Now of course this is what the map is going to look like, your avatar has a purple color before you have assigned them a house. We'll get to that in just a bit, so of course if you look around you can see the water body, you can see the green grass around you and other, the roads and stuff, so that's pretty great. Of course it looks like partly cloudy weather in game right now, which is pretty accurate to the weather in real life. Of course if you tap on your avatar, it's going to look at you and wave at you and kind of does a woohoo kind of thing, which is really cute. Um, now I know a little tidbit, if you actually travel, if you're traveling in a bus or a car at a basically a faster rate than normal walking, your avatar is actually going to be on a broomstick and it's going to be flying of sorts, so that's actually really interesting as well. Since I can't progress any further into this uh, gameplay on my Android device, I'm going to switch over to my iPhone on which I have saved all of Zoe's footage. So once again, thank you Zoe very much for allowing me to use your footage. So this is the footage that Zoe has sent over. As you can see, she has already chosen her house. Uh, it's uh, Slytherin, as you can see the color of the robes has uh, has a green color to it, obviously. Of course, if you choose any other house, such as Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, or Hufflepuff, it will represent the color, respectively. Uh, I just want to quickly point out over here what are all the icons that you see in-game right now. Uh, in the top right-hand corner, you see a compass that's basically in which direction you're facing currently. Uh, just below it uh, shows a cloud icon. Now, if you tap on that, it's going to basically show you all the weather uh, that's in game so it depends uh, it's gonna be the same weather as what is in real life of course it's not gonna be accurate 100% of the time but most of the time it is pretty accurate of course on the bottom there's three icons over there the bottom left corner shows you your avatar we'll click on that in just a bit the middle one shows your inventory that's also gonna be explored in just a bit and the bottom right hand corner shows you your tasks so we'll talk about that a little bit later as well so let's go right ahead now. So this is where you can set up your ministry ID and you can basically set up all of these things. You can change your name. This is this is the different name. We're talking about the ministry name, not your code name. Uh, you can add many titles to yourself uh, once you earn them as you play the game. You can choose your house, your wand, your profession, and uh, some other wizarding achievements in the bottom over there. Now, of course, your house, wand, uh, profession, all of these things can actually be changed at any point in the game and uh, your house and wand actually will not affect gameplay so regardless of whether you're in Gryffindor or Slytherin the gameplay is going to be the same for you and you can switch houses anytime you wish to do so. And of course in the ministry ID, the, the top left hand corner, you can set up a photo of yourself. Uh, don't worry, this photo is not going to be visible to anyone else except you. Of course you can only choose your profession once you've hit level 6. I will be talking about professions in full detail uh, in the next video, uh, so definitely stay tuned. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you know whenever I upload that next video and talk about professions in full detail. Of course, you can switch between houses as well, like I said, uh, anytime you want and it's not going to affect your gameplay, so it doesn't matter whether you're in the best house in the world or the other houses. Of course, you can choose your wand as well, all the way from the length of the wand to the type of wood you want to use, its flexibility and the core. Once again, it does not matter what type of wand you use, it's not going to affect your gameplay in any way whatsoever. And of course, you can choose your wizarding achievements as well. Uh, I believe these achievements will be unlocked to you as you move along with your game's progress. Okay, so those were the basics of the game. Now, of course, we're going to be talking about the gameplay itself. What exactly you need to do in Wizards Unite in order for you to make your progress, level up, and so on and so forth. Now, as you saw from the demo earlier with Hagrid, the Confoundable and the Foundable, basically, Foundables and Confoundables are a huge part of Wizards Unite. Basically, these are the equivalent to the Pokemon spawns that happen in Pokemon Go. So, your job is to get rid of the Confoundable. As uh, I demonstrated earlier, you're supposed to cast Defindo uh, in order to remove the spider webs from Hagrid. So, similar to that, there are going to be a ton of traces, a ton of foundables basically that you'll be able to find and they're going to be of different categories as well and all of these will eventually fill up in your registry page uh, which contain all of these different categories I'll be showing this to you on screen right now there are a lot of categories uh, and a lot of registry items that you can fill as well uh, and 
as the more you collect the more you'll be able to fill up these slots so this is kind of like the pokedex equivalent uh, in pokemon go as of right now i know that there are more than a hundred foundables in game right now as we move along in the future there will be more that will be added for sure so as I said, there are 10 different types of registry items, categories, and we'll be talking about these registry uh, categories in full detail in another video in the future. So once again, a lot of the other things that I'm going to be talking about from here on out will be made into specific videos so that I can talk about those specifically uh, and in full detail and not just in this basic overview video that I'm publishing today. So definitely be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified of whenever I drop those videos. Definitely, you want to be checking those videos out. Moving along, now on your Wizards Unite map, you're also going to be encountering these potion ingredients that will be strewn across the map. Now, as you move along, as you walk or run, whatever you're going to be doing, uh, these potion ingredients will spawn on the map and you can basically collect these ingredients. These ingredients will be used for potion making and Potion making basically allows you to use these potions and the reason why you want to make potions in game is because these potions will help you in your battles and also in your traces that you'll be encountering. Traces aka the foundables that you'll be encountering. Using potions will help make things easier to catch a higher threat level foundable or it can make your battles a little bit easier. So hence, definitely you want to be collecting as many potion ingredients as possible. Once again, a full video on potion ingredients will be coming very soon, indicating as to which potions or uh, which potion ingredients are important and which of them are not so important and you can basically toss them away. Now, potion ingredients are going to be strewn across the map, but they are going to be spawning depending on the time and weather that is uh, currently in game. So if it's rainy weather, it's going to be spawning a different type of potion ingredient as compared to if it's cloudy weather or if it's sunny weather. So I'm not sure specifically on this, but like I said, we'll go into full detail once, the, uh, more, once we get more information on which type of weather spawns which type of ingredients. Also strewn across the map, you will be able to find portkey portmanteaus. Now these portkey portmanteaus, you can basically collect them and they are the equivalent of the Pokemon Go's eggs system. So if you collect these eggs on map, you will be able to hatch these portkey or rather unlock these portkey portmanteaus in the future. By unlocking these portkey portmanteaus, you will be entering into a immersive AR experience mode uh, in game and you'll be able to do some other uh, activities within this AR immersive experience. Now, once again, we'll be talking about portkey portmanteaus in full detail in another video. There are three different types of portkey portmanteaus as well. There's a 2km one, there's a 5km one, and a 10km one. And during special events, I believe the 7km portkey portmanteau will also be unlocked. There is a gold key and a silver key. The gold key is basically like your infinite key. You can use that gold key any number of times you want. And the silver key are paid items and you can also earn them through rewards. Also, Wizards Unite is going to be full of a storyline. It's not just going to be about foundables and collecting them and battling in fortresses. Definitely, there's a storyline to follow. And the storyline is going to be centering around uh, Grim Folly and the London Five uh, and lots of other characters. I'm not going to go into full detail of those yet. We'll talk about the storyline in another video. Of course, like I mentioned earlier, professions will be unlocked once you hit level 6. Uh, I also forgot to mention that actually potion brewing also gets unlocked at level 4. So you can't start brewing potions straight away from the get-go. You have to level up a little bit in order for you to reach uh, level 4 or level 6 and then you can start uh, doing these other activities in-game. As I mentioned earlier, there are daily and monthly tasks as well for you to fulfill. Completing these daily and monthly tasks will give you rewards and these rewards will be helpful to you because you'll be able to get more items this way and uh, some of these items may be quite exclusive so definitely you want to be doing as many rewards as possible in order for you to get as many rewards and make your gameplay a little bit easier. Some of these rewards include the silver keys that I mentioned earlier, books and scrolls to improve your skill tree for each of the professions that you have. Uh, you'll be able to earn gold, potions, and some other rewards as well. Of course, the biggest thing that you're going to notice in Wizards Unite on your map, on your on-world map, is going to be the three different types of points of interest or POIs uh, that you'll be seeing on the map. These points of interest are as follows. There are inns, greenhouses, 
and fortresses. Now, inns are places where you can refill your spell energy. Spell energy is, is used in traces so that you can get rid of the confoundables to free the foundable, and spell energy is also used in fortress battles in order for you to battle uh, a foe or an enemy. There are different types of inns as well, different colors of inns. Once again, I'll be making a full-blown detailed video on this in the future, so stay tuned for that as well. And I'll explain to you why there are different colored inns strewn across the map. Now, greenhouses are a little bit special. Uh, they are kind of like inns, but they can do a little bit more than that. Apart from giving you spell energy, uh, greenhouses will also be able to give you potion ingredients just like how you can find them on the map. One other new feature that they recently added uh, while the beta was still going on was that in the greenhouses, you can actually seed some plants. So once you seed these plants, you'll be able to water them and after waiting a while, you'll be able to reap rewards from watering these plants. And everybody around you, not just you, but everybody around that particular greenhouse will be able to benefit from this. We'll talk about this once again in a future video in full detail. The last and the biggest point of interest that you'll be noticing is fortresses. Now, fortresses are basically the equivalent to gyms in Pokemon Go. In fortresses, you will be able to battle against enemies and you'll be able to team up with other players around you to battle foes and enemies. Once again, we'll be talking about fortresses in full detail and whether or not you can actually solo a fortress all the way down to the last level. We'll be talking about this in full detail very, very soon. Of course, there is an in-game currency as well. The in-game currency will be gold. Uh, I'm not sure why they didn't use gallons or sickles, but gold is the currency in-game. Now, of course, I'll be making a video on how to earn as how to earn gold as fast as possible uh, without spending any real money. Of course, if you spend real money, you'll be able to get gold, and hence you'll be able to purchase items like potion ingredients or uh, more uh, silver keys or oh, a lot of other stuff that'll help improve your gameplay experience. But I'll also try to make a video where I can explain to you guys how you can earn gold fast and in an efficient way without spending any real money. One final feature that I want to talk about is the friends feature. Now friends is basically very very similar to the Pokemon Go system. Uh, you can basically add your other players around you or even around the world. You can send each other friend codes and you'll be able to befriend each other in game. Uh, you'll be able to send each other items and trade stuff with each other so that's really really interesting and I'm really looking forward to having lots of friends in Wizards Unite. Of course there's a limit to 200 friends and I'll obviously not be befriending all of you out there because I simply will not have enough space in my friends list but don't worry I will be making my friends list open to a select few of you so stay tuned to find out how you can be my friend in a future video. So the ladies and gentlemen that is pretty much it for Wizards Unite. I am kind of bummed out that I'm not able to play it right now. As you're watching this, it's already the 21st of June. The US, UK, Australia and New Zealand players, you guys already have Wizards Unite available. I currently do not have it. I'm hoping that the APK version of this app gets fixed soon and I'll be able to play even when it's not officially released here yet. So definitely guys, stay tuned for more videos with tips, tricks, guides, you name it. A lot of the good stuff is coming up in future videos so definitely once again subscribe hit the bell icon so you're notified of whenever i drop new videos and lots of good stuff is happening really really soon once again really happy with this united is finally out i'll see you guys in the next video bye, -bye guys one last thing I forgot to mention, if you are planning on playing Wizards Unite and following my content here on YouTube, you also want to be sure to check out my Twitter and Instagram pages. I will leave the handle right over here. Uh, basically, I'll be able to provide you guys with quick and fast updates on these other channels, uh, Twitter especially. So definitely go follow me on Twitter. Uh, lots of updates there as well. Some of the things that I may not be able to upload on YouTube quick enough or even ever sometimes if it's a very small detail. So definitely you wanna be following me on Twitter and Instagram. Check it out. Yeah.